okay, it's four o'clock. I'm gonna call the disappointments committee to order. Um, this East Hampton City Council Appointment Committee. Present is Councillor J.P. Kaczynski and myself, Lindsay Rothschild. Uh, Councillor Flood will not be joining us today. Do you, it was just you and I, I think at the last meeting, J.P., you didn't really take have any minutes, do you? I, I, sorry, I did not have any okay. minutes. I think I'll, I will definitely have another meeting this year before the calendar year and I'll figure out what minutes we're missing and make sure we get them all in before the calendar year's over. <laughs> I don't think there's too many. Um, so we have a big agenda. <laughs> Yes. We'll be here for five hours now. Just kidding. I'm going to keep it. I reached out to um, one, one of the things when I was reaching out to people is I realized is like what I realized this before is there's not like a consistent updated data of everyone who's on our committees and boards. <laughs> so, you know, so I had trouble reaching out to some people, but um, I did hear back from a lot of people. So that's that's good. Um I'm going to share my screen because I shared a document with you beforehand. Does that sound good? That just just go through the order that I have on the document. Does that sound okay with you? All right. So I think we have what thirty one or thirty appointments. Um, I'm going to start with the new appointments, if that's okay with you. <laughs> sure. Sure. So we have um, one for the ECA. I have a, I've got a table of contents here on the side, so it will be easy to bounce through. Um, that's E Mod Hack French French Co. French Show. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and and she or they are um, a for the ECA on 1231, for a term ending 1231-2023. Um, I'm just gonna read it. If you wanna read, take turns or just to read them into the record. <laughs> so most people, so uh, she says, thank you for reaching out and for the opportunity to share more about my interests in joining the East Hampton City Arts Committee. I have a work meeting that conflicts with the appointment committee, unfortunately, so I won't be able to make it, but here are my responses. I'm interested in serving on the ECA committee so that I can be in a position to support and shape arts and cultural work here in East Hampton, both for the artistic producers and for the many communities that take part in and are represented through cultural expression. As a relative newcomer to the city, it would also be an amazing experience and opportunity to get more engaged in local creative opportunities and get to know more folks who also care about and work in this field. I have been attending ECA committee meetings for the last several months to see if it was a good fit and learn more about the committee's work. I think I have a lot to offer in programming ideas, experience running community-based arts programs, and in prior and ongoing service-oriented roles. I've worked with a range of partners and communities to develop programming, and in this moment of re-envisioning how to serve East Hampton's cultural soul, while under continued pandemic considerations of public gathering, I have ideas to bring to the table and experience in implementing them, as well as invested in the continued work of expanding ECA's impact and the communities that it supports by bringing my experiences in arts nonprofit and hybrid, pub, hybrid public private entities to the soon to be nonprofit arm of the ECA committee. I think this is a pivotal moment for the ECA committee, and I have the passion and skill set to animate these new initiatives. I initially met City Arts Coordinator Pasqualina Azzarello in the spring when my family would attend the weekly Spotlight Performance Series. It was a breath of fresh air to experience live music and to be around others. When in the summer, Pasqualina and I connected about Hoskas, so the plants, on the 413 Plant Exchange Group. We started talking about the committees, and I later started attending the meetings. Last month, I joined several fellow arts workers in reviewing applications for the ECA's AWE residency program. I was proud of the excellent artists who we selected together and excited to meet some of my fellow reviewers in the process. I regularly go to the craft fairs, open studios, the farmer's market, and other community gatherings with family and family, both to explore and support. These kinds of touch points that grow in turn organically are part of what I hope from my participation as a full member of the ECA committee to make connections between parts of my life like gardening or family and the cultural work that I can help affect through the ECA and have enjoyed as a community member. 
Thank you so much for the opportunity to share about my interests and experiences for serving on the ECA committee. Have a good one, and I hope you and yours are all easy into the end of the year. My best, Maude. <laughs> uh, did you want to take these as a group, or? Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do the let's do the two. Of, let's do them in subgroups. So this is one appointment, and then I'll do the next appointment. Because those are the only two new appointments that aren't like a job position. I, I would be honored to read uh, Great. Dr. Newton's. Great, because we need more voices here. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Aqu aquifer protection. Go. For the aquifer protection committee. Uh, I'm happy to give a little. Shall I read it? Or? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, if you could just enlarge it for me, please. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Sorry, here we go. Okay. Uh, happy to give a little background on my interest in the East Ham Aquifer Committee. I recently retired from Smith College, where I was a professor in the Department of Geosciences since 1978. One of my research interests is in groundwater hydrology and chemistry, and indeed I routinely, every other year, offered a course in groundwater geology. This was an upper-level course and included a class project. Many years, this project involved various groundwater issues in East Hampton, such as the source uh, TCE contamination or potential contamination issues concerning the Maloney Well. All these projects were done in cooperation with the East Hampton Water Department. Perhaps more importantly, for more than 25 years, I served on the Barnes Aquifer Advisory Committee, BAPAC. This was a regional committee, and members of the from East Hampton, South Hampton, Hoyoke, Westfield administered uh, through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. The purpose of the committee was to advise the member towns on ways to protect groundwater resources associated with the aquifer. And we routinely reviewed and commented on plans for developments that could potentially impact the aquifer. This was a very effective committee. And it was a, a sad day when it was disbanded. But it has served as a model, and I'm currently working on a num with a number of towns in New Hampshire and from the Ossipi Aquifer Advisory Committee. This committee has already had an impact dealing with the plan to infilt infiltrate power plant wastewater and a plan to build a gas station on a primary recharge area. What I can bring to East Hampton Aquifer Committee is a history of groundwater protection practices where they were done at Bay Pack. And in addition, I have a wide range of technical and analytical skills and can, that can be applied to aquifer protection in East Hampton. For example, and I participated in this directly and re recruited Dr. Newton to help us with this project when oh, we were cool. discussing the Maloney well. So sorry for the divergence here. No, is, is, is comments. One of my groundwater class projects involved in anal an analysis for potential contamination of the Maloney well by leakage from the Northampton landfill. One of my students, actually a Hampshire College student who took my class, continued to the analysis under my direction as his senior research project. This was done at the time the city of Northampton was proposing to expand the landfill. The student, Nick Newcomb, used a mathematical model that integrated GIS data with the USGS mod flow model to emulate or simulate the impact of landfill on water quality into East Hampton's Millennium Well. His results directly contradicted the results of the engineering firm hired by the city of Northampton, who was, by the way, planning to do the expansion over the East Hampton's aquifer. And he made an award-winning presentation of his analysis at a scientific conference, and the landfill expansion was voted down. I will be honored to join the East Ham Aquifer Committee. East Ham relies on the Barnes Aquifer all for all its water needs. It has a history of resourceful stewardship of its groundwater resources as demonstrated by the dedicated... Could you help me out here with rolling the screen? 
by the dedicated personnel in the water department who were instrumental in tracking down the source of the TCE contamination. I think together we can continue to protect this critical resource. I'm happy to answer any questions via email and be willing to attend the meeting on December 8th if needed. I would be honored to recommend the appointment of Dr. Robert Newton. I am thrilled that he's joined us. So you know him. It sounds like you've worked. Oh, we, we worked together. He made presentations before the council and uh, helped us, uh, I think, protect our, our, our groundwater by uh, protecting the Maloney well from further possible contamination from within the uh, landfill. And it's also really exciting to hear about Maud and how she's bringing all these skills. And this is a lot we've been, I don't know, because I'm, you know, relatively new to the appointments committee, but we've heard a lot of stories of people recently moving to town. And I don't know if it's because of the pandemic and there's like limited ways to do things, but it's neat how many people have just moved to town and immediately signed up to become a part of the city. So um, I would um, entertain a motion for both of these. I move to uh, recommend the appointment of Emod Hack. Frenchco, I hope I pronounced it close, if not accurately. Uh, please correct it if it's uh, mistaken and you're aware, Lindsay, uh, to the ECA for 12-31-2023 and for Dr. Robert Newton uh, for the Aquifer Protection Committee, 12-31-2022. And I second that. All in favor? Oh. Good. So moved. Okay, so the next category I have is reappointments. So I don't think any of these folks are here, but we know them from working with them. Um, the city solicitor, um, the city tax collector, and the city treasurer. Um, do you have any specific comments you want to make before? I, uh, I have no specific comments. I, I know the, the work of all three and they're all hardworking folks who have contributed well to our community. So I would be happy to make a motion to recommend the appointment. As okay. um, outlined, the city solicitor, tax collector, and city treasurer, Mark Tanner, Carol Vito, and Jennifer Galant, respectively. We have appointment dates through 12-31-2024 for each. And I second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Now we'll move to the reappointments. Um, so we've got, we don't, I think we can keep reading. We don't have letters from everybody, so I think we will be able to read them as we go. Um, this is Kate Shapiro. She's been on the um, Affordable and Fair House. These are all reappointments. So why are you interested? I have an extensive experience in affordable housing and seek to enhance East Hampton's housing equity and inclusion. I believe that my knowledge of affordable housing is an asset to this community. The following experience provides me substantial knowledge of this area, knowledge that enhances the committee. She's the director of property manager for housing resource management, housing specialist at Wayfinders, where she piloted a project that supported individuals with Section 8, moved to areas of higher opportunity, director of the Tenancy Preservation Program, manager of the Court Services Center. Lastly, I manage all the housing stock for the Department of Mental Health Hampshire site offices from 2008 to 2021. This committee is a primary way of being back to East Hampton community, which is why I'm seeking reappointment. Um, do you want to read the endorsement, um, Jana Senton? I, Jana Tatro, the chair. Uh, Kate is great, fantastic member of the housing partnership. She has had a professional background in affordable and fair housing, is very engaged member, always has great ideas and perspectives. I encourage the appointments committee to recommend that she be reappointed. Okay. How about we do like um, two at a time? So, <laughs> so we'll go. Um, so the next one is. Um, Agricultural Commission, and I didn't hear back from Casey, and I didn't hear back from the chair. So, um, I mean, I know Casey personally, as you probably do, and, and I know that she's, I don't have anything. I I, mean, she's a valuable member of our community. She's very active in lots of different ways. Um, so I, I wouldn't have any reason not to reappoint, recommend her reappointment. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So do you want to, let's do these two. 
Well, then I would move to recommend Kate Shapiro to the affordable and fair housing with an expiration of 1231-2024. And uh, to the uh, agriculture, to Casey was Agricultural Commission. Yeah. Yes. For 1231-2024, Casey Porcello. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. I see the counselor. I didn't, you know what? I didn't do public speak at the beginning of this meeting. Um, well, we could pause here if you care to. We can pause here if anyone has anything mm -hmm. to say about something that's not on the agenda, which is many appointments. If you want to speak to anything besides the appointments, is there anyone? Okay. I forgot. I just, I figure most people are here to talk about the appointments, but you never know. <laughs> uh, always good to ask. Always good to ask. Exactly. Okay. Board of Health and Public Works. Maybe we'll do these together because I don't have anything on either of them. Um, Steve, I didn't because he had, we just met Steve. And we, we just, we, in fact, I believe we met him twice. He we came met him visit. twice. We yeah. Right. So I actually he came two times. So yeah, safety but, Steve. I remember, yeah. <laughs> and he was I think an associate member. That's true. He a member. Yeah. And Board of Health, Amy. Is Amy is Amy here? Is anyone here? One of Amy's new. I don't see Amy. Amy, I, I would move for Amy Petrovsky uh, to the Board of Health for an expert with an expiration 1231-2022. And Steve Litwin to the Board of Public Works with an expiration 1231-2024. Okay, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Both recommended. Okay, we have now the Conservation Commission. I see, I do see that Deborah's here, so that's nice. We'll get some in person. And um, Julianne sent a letter. Um, do you want to read that, Councillor Kuzinski? Well, <laughs> I'll make it bigger. <laughs> thank you. Oh, that's too big. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love it. This works out. Okay, well. there. I'll leave it there. Uh, okay. Uh, I've served on the Conservation Commission since 2016, shortly after moving to East Hampton, and I am an ecologist with 15 years of project management, research, and communications experience. I received my PhD in 2009, focusing on forest and biodiversity conservation as it relates to economic development. I am currently working as a project manager and senior environmental scientist with the local engineering firm Foss & O'Neill where my specialties are climate resilience and stormwater management. Wetlands permitting often comes into play in my work, and such my, as such my experience and professional background are directly relevant to my services on the Conservation Commission. I have a strong understanding of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protections Act and how it interacts with other permitting processes the intricacies of site development and stormwater management projects, and also the underlying ecological processes and potential environmental impacts at stake when we are considering permit requests. Over my six years uh, at the Conservation Commission, I've been a dedicated commissioner with a strong attendance record and have added value to the commission, in particular because of my detailed understanding of the regulations, experience of stormwater with stormwater systems design, and site planning, engineering, invasive species knowledge, and knowledge of culverts and the Massachusetts stream crossing state. I'm also trained in wetlands delineation and soil science, oh my gosh, which is valuable for the site visits and confirming wetland mapping on sites that come before the commission for consideration. What a wealth of experience. <laughs> in addition to my service on the Conservation Commission, I am currently a member of the Solar Ordinance Committee and have been active in various planning processes and meetings in the city relative to the downtown planning project and school reuse discussions. In my professional role with Fuss and O'Neill, I work closely with the DPW and the planning department on climate resilience through a state municipal vulnerability preparedness grant. Uh, which and have been a key member of the team uh, working on green infrastructure master planning and the Cherry Street Green Infrastructure Project. As a resident, I deeply value these varied opportunities to engage directly in my community and the decision-making and planning processes that impact local residents and our environment. So I look forward to continuing to serve on the East Hampton, East Hampton as a member of the Conservation Commission, Julianne Booza. Very cool. 
Um, and I see Deborah's here. Deborah, can we, um, you want, do you want to turn on your camera? And nice to see you. Hi, Deborah. <laughs> thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. Yes, thank, thank you, you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, how long have you been on the committee so far? The Conservation it's, Commission. Oh, it's been two years. Two years. This okay. was my first appointment. Okay, great. So the first question is, um, why are you interested in continuing to serve on this committee? Well, um, so overall, um, I am really interested in continuing to serve um, the Conservation Commission and the city. I enjoy what I'm seeing, what I'm learning, and this commission, uh, these people have vast knowledge and experience, and I love working with them. I feel very honored to be part of this team. Um, I'm learning as we go along, and I've been taking classes with the MACC, and so I- MACC is, for, oh, for those who don't um, know, you're using the lingo already here. It's the mass. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, right. <laughs> it's the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners. Excellent. Yes. So I've been taking classes um, as much as I can during the last two years. Uh, we or Originally, I actually got to go to a conference with the agent and other commission member. But since COVID, everything is online. Um, I've attended every meeting. I'm, um, I try to be as engaged as I can. I do not have the experience yet at, as my other commission members who actually do things like this for a living, but I do contribute um, what I have from what I've learned uh, living in the city, being on the commission. Um, I've lived here for over 20, 24 years. And abutting our property behind us is the largest undeveloped um, uh, resource area for you know wildlife habitat and um, all sorts of woodlands. So I'm seeing trees and plants and animals, and I'm sort of like learning it in the raw, like I'm seeing it on the ground. Um, and by doing that, I'm also learning about uh, safe habitat, preservation, clean water, all the uses that we all need to, to get along and keep it everything in a safe and um, pertinent way. And what I really like about this is when people come to us for projects or uh, neighbors that have an issue, the commission really helps them learn what they need to do mm -hmm. and explains it to them. And so it's, it's they're teaching everyone a little bit at a time how to care for, you know, the world around us, basically, which I love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, each person on the commission has their own strengths and they come from different perspectives. And um, I'm just learning so much. And um, since being on the commission, I've become more aware of what's going on in the community. I love watching uh, all the meetings from all the different departments through the East Hampton media uh, on the cable channel. I try to catch it whenever wow. I can. <laughs> so when we have an agenda, I can then so, so yeah, oh, I, we see us too. <laughs> but when we have an agenda, I can also see it going through the planning board, the ordinance committee, so you can see how it follows along. And and personally, um, I just come from a background of we owned a seafood restaurant in Northampton. We had a dairy farm also in Northampton on 40 acres. So I have some on the ground experience in different areas, how to work with the public, how to work with the animals. And I just have to say, I really enjoy it. I would love to continue to be on this commission. And, and I appreciate you uh, giving me the time to speak about it. Well, it's great to hear. Um, I think you answered the 
the first couple of questions there, what you had to contribute and it's then um, why you're interested. Um, it sounds like beyond learning, it sounds like you bring, um, having run businesses and interacted with animals and, and being a resident living in the land, you have, but is that, that you're contributing that perspective? Yes. About, I, is there other ways? And when well, you talk about watching all the meetings, is there other ways that you like to put out uh, participate in East Hampton? I see, you're very civically uh, engaged. Not a trick question. Uh, it's an opportunity to share. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I'm sort of um, limited in what I'm doing. I'm actually um, disabled. Mm -hmm. So I do not work with it in the community. I see this volunteer mm -hmm. position as my job. Like I, this is like, I want to do this and I give my all. Yeah. Um, and again, for another part of my background, just, you know, I, um, I do have a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice uh, from which was Westfield State College back in the day. <laughs> so I do have detail, I'm detail oriented. I have good investigation yeah. skills mm -hmm. and I pay attention and uh, make sure that I can give as much as I can to whatever they need for my time, reviewing minutes, uh, going to site visits. Um, but other than that, I just I just do my best to be part of this and part of the city. I have another question. Um, this, is, this is more just when I talk to people in the community, sometimes I try to encourage people to get on employments and boards. I think sometimes people think, I mean, committees and boards, sometimes people think, you know, you see like Julianne works in the field. She's, that's her, that's her, you know, her big knowledge base, but that other people, you don't have to come with the professional background. Like there's a whole committee. So I guess like just in helping me talk to people in the community, encouraging people to get involved when that's not necessarily their profession, what would you say to people that are apprehensive because they don't think they have enough knowledge or skills in the area of the committee? In any committee, not yours, just like, just okay. to, help us, to help us encourage people well, to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand because initially I I was unsure mm -hmm. only because I did not have a background. But when I uh, send all my information to the mayor and to the commission, they just want people from different backgrounds, different perspectives. So I would encourage anyone that is interested in any of the committees or commissions or positions that they should apply and just, you know, let them know what you can do, what you'd like to do, what you're able to do. Uh, it's huge because this has been a big step for me in a lot of ways, and I'm I'm more confident. I'm actually speaking to my neighbors now about issues and reaching out. So yes, when you're on something like this, even if you feel you don't have that background, it's very empowering once you start learning what's happening that you can share all that. So I would encourage anyone to to come and be on, you know, whatever um, committee or commission that they feel that they can help the community, can help the city. That was perfect. I might want to take that clip. Oh, <laughs> oh that's okay. I just, <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. very, it's very heartfelt. I've been, I have felt very honored, and I have made this, like I said, my job. I'm very dedicated to it, and the more I learn, I hope there's more that I can do and contribute to the, con, you know, to the conservation commission. So I hope they'll have me, and you'll have me uh, <laughs> to be reappointed, but. Again, ultimately up to the reappointment committee. Well, we do. We recommend. Um, do you have any other primary comments on Councillor Kwasinski? No, I, I just would like to congratulate you on your listening skills, Councillor Rothschild. And you heard, uh, I, I think, Ms. August talk about her experiences and 
I love the way you rolled that into the question of for the for the public service announcement uh, <laughs> for for the future of how to not necessarily be uh, spend your whole career doing a specific interest, but being able to contribute from a community perspective. So I think that was very helpful, and and I really appreciated the comments. Uh, uh, Deborah, so thank you. Uh, good job. I would uh, move to recommend Juliana Buza and uh, Deborah August to the Conservation Commission with the term expiration of. Same one, 1231. 312024. Four was it, yes. Yep. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. We will be recommending you to the full council at the next council meeting. Thank you. Next week, next Wednesday. Thank you, Deborah. It was very nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> you too. Um, let's see. And she did write me, actually. Yes. I just let her talk, which I'm glad I did because it was so nice. So she, this will be the letter she wrote will also go to the record. Um, Council on Aging, there are three people up for reappointments, Charles, Chuck O'Connor, Chuck, Charles, Chuck, Charles Connor, Chuck Connor, Chuck Connor, it's hard for me, I don't usually see his yes. name out, I know it's Chuck, Pat, Patrick, Pat, Patrick, Brown, Joe, Joseph Banas, Banas or Banas? No, Banas. Banas, okay. So Tom Brown wrote an endorsement for all of them. Well, we'll go ahead and read that. Good. The three individuals up for reappointment are very valuable members of the Council on Aging Board. Uh, Chuck Connor and Pat Bruff are fairly new members and represent the business community on the board. They both bring a very valuable uh, perspective to the board. Joe Banus is also a very strong and involved member of the board. As you know, Joe was very involved in the implementation of the Senior Tax Workoff Program. I strongly support uh, the reappointment of all three of these individuals to the board, and also just checking to see if you see the form of my, yeah. my appointment, he said, right? <laughs> I dropped it off the mayor's office about a week ago, so Tom's putting in a plug there. Yeah. I did not see that yet, so yeah, it's yeah, but... be coming. Yeah. Uh, so I would move to reappoint all three, uh, Chuck Connor, Pat Bruff, and Joe Banis to the Council on Aging with a term expiration 1231-2024. And I will second that. And uh, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, so moved. We will be recommending them to the Council on Aging. Okay, now we're at the CRC. So I see Rebecca's here. Rebecca, do you want to talk to us? <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Well, I'm here because. Um, you know, I know our terms are coming up, and I looked at your agendas. I didn't to get an invitation, so I don't know. Did somebody else? Maybe you got a. a I something? emailed you, and it bounced back. So oh the dear. So must have an outdated email for you. But I'm glad you just came and checked the agenda. Sure. I'll tell. So, I'll show you. I'll go. You can um, send me your email. Um, I don't, okay. this, this is not the place, but I'm like kind of frustrated with the collection of everyone's information in our city right now. It's hard for me to access it. Um, so I had one for you and it bounced back, but I'm glad you made it anyway. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't even know. Okay. So you did try. It was a All Yahoo right. one. I think it was a Yahoo address. Oh, well, if it is, boy, that's either ancient or I don't use it. Uh, with, I've I've used a Gmail address since getting appointed. So, uh, okay. but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about but that later. I'll I'll figure out how to find you. I'll send you an email. Okay, send me an email and then I'll have it. So I'm glad you came. So why are you interested in continuing to serve on the CRC? Okay, well, um, I personally I hold the view that a cohesive community in which residents cooperate with each other, they learn from each other. They help each other. I think that is helpful and good for everybody. Um, I think discord and division is pretty bad. <laughs> so um, I see the Community Relations Committee as at least potentially helpful in the promotion of good interpersonal relationships within the community. Um, it's new enough that we are facing appointments, reappointments for the first time. 
But I am pleased to say that during this last year, we've reached out, we've got training from Derek Dean of the Department of Justice. Two of us attended the, um, the city's undoing racism um, class. Margaret and I attended in October. And um, I'm more than happy to continue, if I may, helping in work that I think is wonderful and good and would be good for everybody. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll find our way and be able to contribute to mm -hmm. successful betterment of the community, but uh, I'm here because I care about that. Great. Um, thank you for coming. We have three standard questions that we ask everyone now. So you hit the first one while you're interested. And the second one is, um, what, 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 what can you bring? What skills and professional knowledge do you bring to the, to the committee? Okay. Well, I think that, um, I think my heartfelt interest in this work yeah. is valuable. Mm -hmm. um, I can also say that especially during the pandemic when so much has been available on Zoom, I've been able to attend a variety of different meetings. Um, Sudbury, Massachusetts has a group that originally I think they called themselves a race amity group. They're now renamed to something like social justice and uh, but anyway, they pr promote good race relations and community relations. Mm -hmm. um, they had a series of talks, but they also showed a film. They had a film showing in discussion. The film is called I'm Not Racist, Am I? Which was interesting. It was about um, a training for some high school youth. And uh, afterwards, some of the film creators and others were there to talk about it, which was very interesting. Um, out of Illinois, there's a man who does a monthly um, intimate dialogue on race, which is, it's got a lot of attendees, but what's really, um, I think, helps with people's learning about each other. He asks, each time he asks four people of color and four white people to address certain questions about their experiences, and I, and he, does it in a safe way. I mean, I think that some some information um, that could be shared, some people may never have access to because there needs to be safety. Anyway, I think what I bring to it is experience uh, from from those events. Also, there's a group out of uh, Detroit that I've joined. Um, That's my hometown. Detroit. Oh, okay. Well, so there is a greater Metro Detroit group who, mm -hmm. who I joined a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so, and uh, really enjoyed that too. Great. So, I'm glad that's your hometown. There's some great people there. There are, there are. It's a city with a lot of heart. Um, and what are other ways that you engage in the East Hampton community? Volunteerism, meetings, events, social media, et cetera, <laughs> school. Well, for better or worse, I, I had a period of time trying to help um, uh, manage the East Hampton Facebook group page that, oh. that Stan McCoy, with, with Stan McCoy, <laughs> that he's, he's carrying on, I believe. Oh, I, used, good. I used to go see him personally. I mean, it was a great opportunity to get to know him and, and the other administrators, but Stan in particular, I would say he's quite dedicated. Mm -hmm. I felt I felt like I didn't have the time for it. At some point, I was preferring the community relations <laughs> yeah. over it, but... Uh, well, I uh, applaud you for spending some time there, because that was not an easy place to moderate. <laughs> no, I was always trying to balance between things, and my balance may not be where some people's are. I really hated to kick anybody out of the group. <laughs> You know, it's like the yeah. last resort when they will not, they will not <laughs> follow, you know, guidelines, then you have to do it, you know, but, <laughs> but I, I prefer to include everybody. Yeah, what can I say? So, so sometimes I would meet with people too, uh, before the um, pandemic, I went in from time to time, usually to Tandem Bagel that I like mm -hmm. a lot and met some folks in person. <laughs> to ask, you know, to either hear them or ask them questions. Oh. So, 
It's great. I think once you get people off the the Facebook, the you know, you, you know, then you. you well, know. somehow you know, there's something to be lost if you're not in person. Yeah. So when I really wanted to deal with a concern that I wanted to see the person, which I saw probably four or five people I met with. Well, thank you, Rebecca, for coming and thank you for continuing to do that hard work. And sounds like internally and meta and, and you know, and many, was it micro and macro. And so I appreciate your service to the city. Um, we're going to, there's three of you, so we'll go. Emily, I, Margaret, that was another email I didn't have. So unfortunately, she's not here. You could endorse her if you wanted to. <laughs> um, and Emily wrote an email, so I'll read Emily's quickly. She's Emily Britton. Uh, she says, a welcoming opportunity is one in which I would like to live. A welcoming community is one in which I would like to live for a long time. In some ways, I believe that there's no more important work than the help of than that of helping to strengthen connections between people and promote acceptance and fairness and equity. I'm aware of implicit bias, bias as well as systemic racism and know that those are two forces. Those two forces are extremely difficult to change. I believe that a community which makes even the slightest inroads toward attempting to build connections between people is one in which an ethical and is one which is an ethical and healthy one. The idea of a city committee working on this is surely relatively new in the span of centuries. And then working within a system which has systemic racism built in because of the largest society around it is obviously difficult. I'm impressed by Mayor LaChapelle for putting effort toward this in all the ways she has thus far. And I'm dedicated to helping to grow the effort. Council Kuzinski, you want to take number two? <laughs> I've co-chaired. Uh white ally groups on and off since graduate school. Uh, currently doing so for my current employers, the Psychology Training Committee. I am a clinical psychologist with the Department of Veterans Affairs in Leeds. I am trained to facilitate, but in person. I cannot claim to be a skilled facilitator in the current online media, in part because I still work face-to-face -face at the hospital. I have not enjoyed the online medium. Uh, since we were focused to meet that in that way, but I am sticking with it. <laughs> I want to contribute by being a listener and helping steer uh, the conversation back to opportunities for those who want to speak. I attend many arts and music events. I'm moving on to three here, okay. including some of the high school uh, where children uh, and friends have performed, but have only volunteered for cultural chaos. And on this committee, uh, previously, I attended some of the meetings of the group, which was working to preserve fair treatment of immigrants in the city. My daily work is with the federal government, and I've done outreach with some of their causes, for example, suicide prevention in Britain. Okay. And we have Margaret. Margaret Kirsten. Kirsten. All right. Um, I would move to recommend all three appointments. I second that. With the term expiration 1231-2024. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. We will be recommending you. Thank you, Rebecca. For Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you. We appreciate your enthusiasm and your expression and your perspective. So, and bringing us new information about other groups and the study of what you've learned. So, thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. So, I guess I'll. I'll take off, but uh, you can, thanks yeah, again. No. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank you. your consideration. Good to, see you. <laughs> Good to see you. So let's do the EDIC and the Nash Pond Committee together. So for the EDIC, we have uh, Cassie Eckhoff and Gwen Morrissey, who's the chair, wrote me an email that she's a thoughtful, organized, well-connected, driven human being who cares a lot about her relatively new adopted favorite city. And I love having her on EDIC. The vacant storefront ordinance work would have gone nowhere fast without her dedication to it. I urge you to reappoint her. Thank you for your attention and opportunity to sing her praises. Gwen Morrissey, chair. So that's from the EDIC and the Nash Pond. Um, I didn't have Mary Lou's email, unfortunately. And Lainey, I just put this in because I thought it was funny. Um, she did. Well, this is new. I mean, she wrote it to me, so it's public. LOL, I've been on the committee since 2013 and never had to do this before. She did. 
She said, I, there's a new chair in town. I'm making you do right stuff. <laughs> good. I'm up to my eyeball with the population tomorrow. So, I'd show, so it shows her other participation in the city. I'll reply to this hopefully on Monday, waiting. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> I, I would uh, recommend uh, the was it the three or the cat the, the heck okay. off to the EDIC with an expiration 12-31-2024 and uh, Laney Wood uh, to uh, National Pond Committee 20-31-2024 and also Mary Lou Dodge with the same expiration date. Second, all in favor. Oh. Hi. So moved. Okay, Parks and Rec, we've got three here. Um, I think Eric's here. So if Eric, do you want to answer your questions in person? I have them here, but um, I can read them. Um, and I just want Robert and Brian, I think we um, didn't hear back, but I just want to put that John Mason did send an endorsement of all three. He said, as far as the commission members for reappointment, they are good Parks and Rec commissioners who are hardworking and passionate about both passive and active recreation opportunity. Thank you again for reaching out, John Mason. So, um, Eric, do you wanna answer your questions live or do you want us to read it? Um, you know, actually, I mean, I can answer them live, Lindsay. I apologize, oh. I'm gonna leave my camera off. I just had a, a COVID booster and a flu shot earlier today, so I'm not exactly 100% <laughs> snuff, so. I picture uh, you with a nice back on your head. Okay. <laughs> So um, we have your, um, so the first well, question is very what? Very clearly, very, very clearly, Eric. So you're coming across very well. Okay, <laughs> great, thank you. Um, so the first question, what you have here, um, is why are you interested in continuing to work on this committee? Well, um, basically, I, I'm, I just turned 48 a couple months ago, and I feel like I've spent really my entire life uh, at the parks uh, in East Hampton. Um, when I was a younger person, I worked there in nearly every capacity uh, from the time I was 14 until actually I was in my early 30s. I worked on the grounds crew. Uh, I worked in the summer basketball and swimming program. Um, I spent some time working in the toll booth. So uh, I, I, I played at one point in another, probably in every organized sports league in East Hampton with the exception of football. We didn't have that back then. Um, so I, I spent a lot of time at the park uh, growing up and I feel like I have a pretty strong background and knowledge in the various aspects of the work that goes on there. Um, even after I stopped working there and my professional career began, um, I'm an avid tennis player, so I, I use the courts there regularly. My, my band has played at the band shell um, and at Cultural Chaos. Um, I've had a season's pass to uh, both the pools at the old pool at Whitebrook and uh, the, the community pool at Nanatuck Park. So when the opportunity came a couple of years ago for appointments to the Parks and Recreation Commission, I thought, you know, I've, I've had such a, I, my life has benefited so much. And so I have so many great family memories from time spent at the park that um, it, I felt it was really important for me to try to give back. And um, I was uh, very proud to be appointed two years ago. And um, I'm asking humbly to be reappointed again. Okay, thank you. And then the next question we ask is, in what ways are you able to contribute to the committee? Professional experience, personal skills, and you have it here. I'll just... Sure, yeah. So, um, so in my in my professional life, I'm a professor of library and information science, and I'm the director of the Simmons University West Campus, which is based in South Hadley. Um, I manage about a thirty million dollar budget every year, so I do have some sense of the the very important fiscal decisions that have to be made in a municipal budget on a, on a day to day basis. Um, my position requires a lot of I'm wearing a lot of different hats. I am responsible for student and faculty recruitment, student and faculty support. So, uh, and I, I, I do honestly feel that a lot of those skills that enable me to, to juggle a lot of balls in the air, I learned while working at the park um, because I certainly mm -hmm. know everyone who works at the park ha is always on the go and is always. Um, you know, there's no, no day there is exactly the same. So, um, I feel like my, my professional experience, uh, is a, is a benefit for me. Um, I've been committed to various fundraisers and community engagement in East Hampton for basically my entire adult life. Um, I was the chairman. Of, Sorry. Uh, oh. Sorry. I thought I moved silence. Okay. Um, so that was, 
about $70,000 for the East Hampton Toy Fund. Um, I am one of the co-chairs and still uh, current organizers of the Give the Bird 5K that's raised over $150,000 for the East Hampton Community Center. So um, I feel like my background um, as a as a community organizer, as a as a someone who works for positive change in our community, uh, on our community, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, will help me to continue to be a strong commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to, um, Councillor Zaret sent an email that he wants to put into the record with his concerns, so I'm, I will read it. Um, it says, Councillor Flood, I am writing to you regarding the request for reappointment of Eric Poulin to the Parks and Rec Commission. I feel that Mr. Poulin's public facing behavior excludes him as a candidate, and I believe he should be not should not be approved for reappointment. The behavior in question includes, but is not limited to, describing elected officials as racist, bootlickers, false or misleading statements about city departments, such as stating that our police department participated in the January 6th insurrection or escorted black back and blue rally through the town, and generally pugnacious, condescending and expletive lace interactions with residents and the public in one recent case yelling calling someone an asshole his statements are expressed as statements of facts not opinion they're not objections to policy decisions but merely mean-spirited words with zero collaborative or constructive value there's no denying that mr pullen has made positive contributions to the city via his participation in organizing the given the bird road race and his advocacy for our public library for my part i've recognized those contributions and applauded them that said we must expect a certain level of professionalism compassion and non-bias from our applicants no matter what committee or per commission, we must look at each applicant and reappointment and ask ourselves if their behavior and actions are what we believe is representative of the ideals and values of our city. I believe that appointment is to a city committee is a privilege, not a right. We all have lapses in judgment and behavior, but we also rectify those lapses with appropriate statements and introspection. I have not observed this in Mr. Poulin's part with what I believe are defamatory, slanderous, and libelous statements. While many of these statements take place on social media, social media should be a reflection of our in-person self, social media is not an excuse to don an ident alternative identity or set of behaviors. Our actions there should be there should reflect our true selves, perhaps even more so because social media is so easily mem memorialized and archived. We have set precedent in the past in rejecting applicants for similar, potentially less offensive behaviors, whether it be Parks Commission, the CRC, or some other committee. Everyone should be held to the expectations of non-bias, professionalism, kindness, and compassion. We must not assign a higher bar for one committee or another. Any committee assignment comes with the same privilege of representing your city and responsibility of being such a representative. I encourage the committee to reject this appointment as well as anyone in the future with similar issues or concerns. Thank you, Owen Um Shelby and Donovan, I see you have your hands up. Did you want to say something? Oh, may I? Yep. Hi. Oh. Hi. Hi, uh, I just wanted to speak in favor of um, moving Eric forward for the appointment. Uh, personally, Eric has always been very helpful and knowledgeable anytime I have come to him uh, with parks and rec questions. He's been able to answer them without delay um, or issue. Eric also cares about the town in general and has provided ideas and support to other town projects, including the library. He has also created, um, like he said already, and supported multiple community fundraisers. Um, and from my understanding, he also has been recommended by the Parks and Rec director. Um, so I think in my experience with him, he seems to have a really good grasp on the Parks and Rec knowledge and um, is able to answer any questions and is easily accessible, which I think is important in that role. So just wanted to, to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Um, Omar, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, but I think Councillor uh, Kuczynski um, tried Maybe. to say something before. I don't know if you want to talk before me. It, it just had to do with procedure and uh, I, I do want to hear from Eric, but I, I certainly and I appreciate the comments made by Shelby, so I'm please feel free to continue uh, with Councillor Rothschild's uh, acknowledgement of your quest, of your, uh, uh, in your hand. Okay. So, okay. so can I continue it? I, I'd say right. yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, 
I'm here. I was, you know, since the start of the meeting, listening to everybody and, and um, just to be part of the meeting. And I think uh, all the reappointments and new appointments are, are good for the city, including uh, Mr. Eric. Um, it's really interesting that what Councilor Owen Sarret put in his letter. And, and I think we have to be clear that when we set the precedents in the past, was was a particular uh, committee that those that person that was applying for that committee um, those comments or posts or stuff that they have was related to to something that will affect that committee in particular. I will be concerned if uh, Mr. Poulin will be uh, putting in his uh, social media that, by the way, by the First Amendment of our Constitution, he will be allowed to do so, right? Uh, but um, if he will say something about that he don't want, I'm going to use my ethnicity as a, as example. He will, he will say like he don't want to accept or uh, allow Puerto Ricans next to the little kids because um, that will affect. Um, the little kids or the coaches, then I will be against this uh, reappointment. But no, that's not the case, right? Um, when he uh, posts stuff on Facebook of or anywhere that he decides to do it, um, he just gives his opinion. And I think we have to, as a, as a politicians, as a counselors, we have to be open to listen that kind of kind of. Um, comments, even when we don't like it, even where it's not our style, uh, we have to understand that everybody is different and everybody has the freedom of, of speech. I will do um, next Wednesday, I will be in, uh, vote in favor of it because I don't think uh, his comments or his posts on social media are not related to uh, Park or Rec Commission. So uh, I will re re be voting in favor next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilor Krasinski. Did you want to say something? Uh, I believe there were some other folks who had raised their hands, but I don't see them raised at the moment. So uh, I, I would certainly love to hear from Eric. Uh, um, I don't have any comments at this time, Mr. Uh, Count. Councilor Krasinski, I actually don't have any comments at this time. Um, this is my first time reading this letter. Um, so I don't feel prepared to speak to it. I can certainly appreciate that. <laughs> if it were the first time of my reading the letter, uh, I would have. Uh, uh, but I did want to fully offer you that opportunity uh, because some I appreciate of the that. harsh things were were were, were said, and I, I guess. I hadn't seen the, the post again, as, as you may or may not know, I'm not uh, a, a great user of, of Facebook at this time. Uh, but if something is brought to my attention, I'll certainly try to pay attention to that on Facebook and be aware. I seem to understand that there's a distinction here, I think, between the type of committee that you're being asked to serve on and the type of committee that I, I think or certain comments might be relevant to that committee. And I don't see that on the face of it, that they're related. So I would agree with Councillor Gomez that if you were saying things about ethnicity and we were talking about the usage of, of the park, that would be something that I would definitely have some questions about. I uh, would be inclined to say, listen, I, I think you've been on the committee for quite some time. You've garnered the re recommendations of the director of the uh, uh, Parks Department. I value that highly. And I don't have any specific questions about any of these comments, but just wanted to be able to afford you every opportunity to respond should you care to. And you may not care to, and that's absolutely fine, too. <laughs> so I see, his, uh, I see his hand up, so. I saw the hand well, up, and I saw the, see the hand down now. So well, as, as, as I said, Councillor Krasinski, uh, I don't really intend to comment at any length uh, at this time on this letter. However, I will state that there are multiple uh, points that are made in this letter that are just blatantly false. Uh, and um, I feel that that should be in the record and you all should be aware uh, of that. So thank you.
Well, I I appreciate that, and I appreciate your the, the service that you have you have provided and the recommendation of, of the department head. Uh, so I would be inclined to uh, re make recommendation for appointment. Okay, That's I just it. want to make a comment too. Um, I'm not interested in being an arbiter of the behavior or. Um, words of residents in the community. If it affects the work of, that they're doing on a committee this directly, then that's something to be discussed. Otherwise, um, I'm an elected official. I'm not a I'm not an arbiter of the residents' behavior, and so I'm I'm also inclined to recommend. I will be recommending um, Eric Poulin's reappointment. I think he's been made a valuable contribution, and. Um, so, if you want to make that motion, Councilor Kuznetsov. Uh, that being said, uh, I uh, would recommend uh, Eric Poulin to the and, and along with Robert, Robert Bayardi, uh, Bob Bayardi, and Brian Hilpold. Brian Hilpold. I'm sorry, I don't have the list before me, but yes, Brian Hilpold uh, with the term expiration of 2031. Was it 2024? Yep. Uh, and I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. Um, on to the planning board. And I just wanted to go back. I just saw my email that Margaret from the um, CRC did and actually did respond like four minutes before our meeting with their answers to your question. I'm just going to add it to the document since we already voted to recommend her and I'll share it with the full, I'm going to share the whole document with the full council since there's so many names and so many people on this list. Um, so onto the planning board, we've got James Arvis and Jesse Belcher Timmy. So James Arvis says, um, he considers it his civic duty to promote and support the city of South, I mean, not Southampton, East Hampton, sorry. Um, what ways are you, in what ways are you able to contribute to this committee? Um, my many years of fair and unbiased adjudication, coupled with demonstrated deep institutional knowledge of planning board processes and the ability to model said skills for others speak for themselves. <laughs> now, what other ways are you engaged? Um, I, over the years, I've done many things in this community, such as chairing or otherwise serving on several city boards, serving as the president of East Hampton Media, hosting fundraiser events for charities, and creating awareness of this great city wherever I go. I continue to serve as vice chair of the planning board and have been privileged to play a small but important role in the revival of this old mill city and the thriving destination of this today. I have long stood in support of local businesses, the arts and tourism in East Hampton. My message to your committee is you review all these names up for re renewal is that while you do have many in your list today, the list is still not big enough. We have more work to do and we must cherish those willing to stand up and help. Be well, Jay-Z. And then Jesse says, I'll let you read those, but since we're still on um, James, I will say that Jesse wrote, I will pass on recommending myself to reappointment, but I did want to get on record regarding my <laughs> vice chair, James Zardes. He has served on the planning board since approximately the same time I was appointed, approximately 10 years ago, and has been an incredible resource to me and the board for all that time. James has gladly served as my vice chair for, I believe, at least eight years. This role is a thankless one as it requires him to be ready to act in my chair at any time. I have to recuse myself due to conflicts with my legal practice, something that comes up with some regularity. James is always ready and willing to jump in at those times and runs an excellent meeting when he assumes that role. In our years on the board, James has been consistently offered, has consistently offered insightful and illuminating questions and comments and does a wonderful job of taking into account all the various stakeholders when an issue comes before us. James is a wonderful asset for the city and the planning board, and I'm thrilled to have him continue in that capacity, not only as the current chair, but also a resident of the city. I would strongly urge you to recommend his reappointment to the planning board. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, Jesse, and so I'll let you read Jesse's in regards to himself. <laughs> I've served on the planning board for approximately 10 years and the last eight or so I, as a chair. And I continue to see this as a crucial role in the city and an interesting and rewarding way to serve my community. The board is currently constituted is a wonderful collection of committed volunteers with a wide variety of professional and personal experience. And I take great pleasure in working with them along with our incredible planning department. Uh, to address all the issues that come before us. I am grateful to have been appointed and reappointed uh, now by three successive mayors, and I hope to continue in this role. Number two, part of what I like 
about the planning board is the breadth of issues that present themselves in our meetings. I have a legal practice that currently includes municipal law and zoning law as large parts of my regular work. Taking that experience and education into board meetings is invaluable. While I never offer a opinion or represent myself as counsel for the board or the city, my own experience, both with dealing with local zoning ordinances and in the community and with preparing and presenting permit applications in other communities, gives me a unique perspective and allows me to better serve the city. In addition to serving on the planning board, I have also been a member, board member and a hockey coach for the North, not the hockey coach, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> We're not a yeah. Valley hockey association uh, for the last 12 years. I have coached hockey players ranging from three years old to 19 and continue to coach in various capacities while also serving as a coaching coordinator for the association. I have two children and who have attended public schools in East Stanton since kindergarten and I'm currently uh, first year and junior at EHS. Yeah. Full disclosure, I coach in the same league with, with Jesse Pilcher. I was going to ask. If and I play hockey with him on Sunday nights. Ah, all right. I was, yeah, that's great. You are still playing hockey. Super. I am. Yep. Keeps me sane. Um, so, should we do the... I, I, I would be honored to uh, make the recommendation for the reappointment of Jesse Belcher Tim and for James Sarvis. Uh, I, I, I would agree that both of them, I'm sorry, I'm going to no, sorry. That both of them ask very insightful questions. And what I find is, as a planning board member, it, it it's a very important role that you serve in the community where listening to the public is very important. Uh, and, and I think they work very hard to listen to the public uh, and, and have, have served the city well in that regard. So I appreciate their, their service uh, and I'm glad that they're there. Yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, their meetings are it's a lot of dense things that they're working through and a lot of time that they dedicate. Um, and I, you know, I even before Van City Council, just going to planning board meetings, those two have always since I've been here, they've always been kind of integral to the to that board. So I will. Did you recommend them? I think I you recommended them. You yeah, I'll second it. Okay, so all in favor. Uh, <laughs> I'm losing myself. All right, so moved. Um, the telecom committee. Um, there was some back and forth. So with Barb and so we're not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to entertain a motion because this committee should have been disbanded. So we just, we won't, should we not just take a, we won't take a vote on that? Or we, do we vote not here? Okay. Um, and we have one left. We did it. <laughs> JP almost. So, you know what? I, I actually, um, I didn't have their contact information. And then Selma, I have met, actually. I met her when I was, collecting signatures this year. Um, so I don't know if you know Thelma, but she's a vet who lives in East Hampton and um, Precinct 1, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and um, she had told me that they weren't really meeting because they don't, they didn't take to the Zoom, like the group. So <laughs> I had heard that, yes. Yeah. So um, I don't know, you know, if we're going to be going forward on Zoom, it'd be nice. I think we discussed this before. It'd be nice if someone like got the group going on Zoom <laughs> or somehow. But that's so that's just something to think about. But anyway, um, I don't so I don't have anything to you know to to offer. I, I met Thelma. She was very enthusiastic about being in the Veterans Council, but she said they hadn't met since COVID. So <laughs> I uh, had no specific comments or questions about either. I'm very disappointed that the group doesn't feel comfortable meeting uh, by Zoom. Um, so my, many of us have, have tried our best to go ahead and do so during this period. Uh, but I certainly can appreciate it. <laughs> Not everyone yeah. is, is a deaf Yeah, I, I think that maybe, um, you know, I'd like to talk to the mayor's office about reaching out to the chair. Um, and seeing maybe if the chair is uncomfortable, maybe they could get a you know, have a different chair that feels comfortable 
facilitating it on Zoom because I don't know. I know they, from what I understand, Thelma was telling me they they do a lot of, well, they do a lot of the events and the events aren't happening either because of COVID, but they do also, I think, scholarships or they do education in schools too. So I think a lot of the stuff, what she was telling me, involved things of going places that they weren't doing. So, but it would be nice if this, you know, it doesn't seem the pandemic is like leading, <laughs> that there can still be ways to support and do veteran events online or an education online. So um, I, I would hope that one of us might be willing to, even the counselors might be willing to host their, their, their meetings if that's what they needed or whether it was just pervasive across all the, the entire group that there was an, perhaps an aversion. Or maybe it's yeah. just a matter of, of, of some training and learning. Yeah, and some outreach. Yeah, so like, let's, I don't, I guess I'll reach, out to, reach out to the mayor. I, I certainly would be interested in, in offering what not that, not that okay. I shield as others in, 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 in the, uh, the Zoom room. You're here, you're Zooming. Who's Zooming who? <laughs> all right. So, but I, I don't I, I would recommend <laughs> the appointment of family history and, and Neil Ed to uh, the Veterans Council 1231-2024. And I will second that. And all in favor? Uh, aye. I'm so moved. We've gone through all the new business. There's no continuing minute business and I think we've reached the end of our meeting so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I just can't tell if Councilor Gomez's hand oh, is up. Did you guys say something? Or are you just waving? No, no, I, just, I just say I like you're pretending that I vote too. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, do you, would you like to make a motion to adjourn? JP or do you want to? That being said, uh, I would be happy to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Thank you for your patience today throughout this meeting. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second that. Um, all in favor? Uh, so adjourned at 5.12. We are adjourned. Thank you. Stop filming. Thanks.